Happy Monday. What's going on you guys? I hope you all enjoyed your weekends. In today's video, we are going to be returning to the weekly subscriber Q&A where we sit down and take some questions and comments from around our various socials and answer them here on the channel for all of you. But first, if you haven't already done so and you're new here, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. And let's go ahead and get into this week's weekly subscriber Q&A. In today's video, I do want to do something a little bit different here at the beginning because I've had a lot of people ask the same set of questions. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to answer those in kind of a catch-all way and then we'll go ahead and jump into some of these specific questions and comments from all of you guys that I've picked from the comments section. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this week's weekly subscriber Q&A. Now, one question that I've gotten a ton of over the past week and a half is pertaining to whether or not I am going to be ranking the Dead or Alive 6 characters on a tier list system. And to answer that question concisely, I am not going to be doing that. The reason I am not going to be doing that, there's a couple of them, but the main reason why I am not going to do that is because as I have already mentioned previously here on the channel numerous times since this collaboration went live, all of these characters are quality. There isn't any of these characters that are going to be bad per se. So it's basically just comes down to picking which character you feel like would benefit you the most by looking at what it is that you need help with the most in the game currently. So for instance, if you need a lot of help with time attack, then you're probably going to want to look at the Angel of Paradise Neo Tengu, the Angel of Paradise Marie Rose, etc, etc. If you're needing help with Guild Raid, then of course you're going to want to look at characters such as Honoka, if you're looking at help for Omega Rugal, that is, and then you can also look at a character such as the SS Marie Rose for that as well, so on and so forth. So in my opinion, it really doesn't make sense to do it with this collaboration, and I think that the proof is in the question itself. I've never been asked to do this with a collaboration in the past, and I get the feeling the reason why people are wanting this right now for this one specifically is because all of these characters are so good that people are having a hard time picking and choosing which one is the best, or which couple are better than the others or so on and so forth and while it is pretty obvious there's a couple of them that stand out to be honest with you guys i really don't see the point in it that and as a youtuber if i sit here and try to rank the characters that are going to be this good or at least characters that are not going to have necessarily a standout bad couple of characters then basically what's going to happen is i'll post that tier list and then i'll get ripped apart in the comments section and on discord reddit and so on and so forth so i'm not going to do that so sorry if that disappoints all five of you out there who want that but i'm not going to be doing that now the other thing that i've been getting asked about a lot is which stones to put on these characters and this is one that I've already talked to a lot of the big names in the community about just to kind of get a general consensus on this however it did seem like it was a fairly obvious thing to answer but looking at all of these characters there's really no reason to go for defense stones on any of them you're best just going for the attack stones for all of these characters and they're going to treat you just fine so that is my opinion on this and that is what everybody else has given me as well when I've asked them the same question so at this point just go for attack stones that's almost always going to be the answer in this game none of these characters stand out as characters that would benefit greatly from defense stones even if the dead or alive collaboration stones are going to just be awesome so honestly I think that it really just comes down to just pick the attack stones maybe just have one set of defense stones for the dead or alive collaboration laying around by the end of the event just in case you ever decide to change your mind or something changes with the characters but really there's no reason to go for defense stones for any of these so that is pretty much going to be that I'll probably do a video explaining all of this in detail later when it comes to the stone situation with these characters but really when you look at things such as explosion, the leadership skills, and the like. Almost every single thing that you look at is going to be based off of attack, so there's really no reason to go for defense, especially when there's no character here that is going to have just a copious amount of defense to attack conversion. So those are the couple of questions I just wanted to get out of the way here at the beginning. Without getting into all of the nitty-gritty details of the rest of those things there, 
let's go ahead and get into the specific comments and questions from you guys. So the first question that we have here comes our way from Wild Dan Habiki, who asks, how is the collab card set compared to the Akane set? Looks like it helps you get much bigger scores in Guild Raid. And to answer this concisely, because I am going to be doing a video for you guys spotlighting this card set, I'm going to fall back on what I've already told you guys over the course of the past week and a half, and that is going to be that this card set is definitely worth investing in if you do plan on getting these characters, even if you're planning on just building up the SS Honoka, who is definitely going to want this card set, it makes a big difference in your overall damage totals. Is it going to be something to where you make or break for these characters? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but at the same time, you are going to be losing out on the true potential of some of these characters without this set. So again, I am going to be doing a video spotlighting this card set because I have been running a lot of tests on it in the background in this capacity but I wanted to go ahead and give you guys an answer to this one in this video before that but we'll be getting to that video later on this week hopefully so thank you for the question Wild Dan Habiki an awesome username and the next question we have comes from Vice the Legend 96 who asks is there a trick to get SS Rose I've yet to even get the second copy uh, to be honest with you there is no trick you just got to be really lucky but thank you for the question Next up, we have a question from Mr. Crypto, who asks, When can we transcend our battle cards, or is that scrapped? Thank you for the question, Mr. Crypto, and to answer this one for you, there is no confirmation on what's going on with the transcend card system. We haven't really gotten any confirmation. It was pulled late, as we all know, from this initial update from the Dead or Alive collaboration, so we aren't necessarily sure on what's going on here. However, I would say that a good bet is going to be the fact that we'll probably get it with the second third anniversary update that we'll be getting towards the end of August that we'll be bringing with it the Epic Quest Chapter 2. So I'd assume that they probably just pushed it to that update more than likely. So that's going to be my bet. However, I wouldn't necessarily quote me on that because all I have to go on there is just common sense. So that's all I got for you on that one they haven't given us any sort of confirmation whatsoever so stay tuned but thank you for the question and next up we have a comment from the discord from Ozra and Valerie who asks question for the Q&A are collabs going to be SS or BS going forward like if they collab with Marvel where there'll be a BS Doctor Doom for example also do you think Netmarble will continue throwing rubies per collab or is it just this one thank you for the question Ozra and Valerie and to answer this because there's two questions here first and foremost I have no confirmation and no idea whatsoever on what they're going to do going forward with collaboration I don't know if this SS situation with this one is going to be a one-off thing, especially since the word of mouth and kind of the general consensus around the community has been that people do not like this whatsoever. So I'm hoping that they don't continue to do this. But typically with Netmarble, if they start a trend, you can pretty much set your watch to the fact that they're probably going to go kicking and screaming with it. So I would assume that you're probably going to be at least seeing SS characters in some of these collaborations going forward i really don't think that they're ever going to make boss syndrome characters collaboration characters that just feels like it's something specific for the king of fighters characters but you never know with netmarble they probably if they had the right collab and they thought that it would make sense they might end up doing it i don't think that we're probably ever going to get a marvel collaboration by any stretch of the imagination but you know what i mean now the second question here is do i think that they are going to continue throwing a bunch of free ruby at us around collabs and to be honest probably uh, if you really look at it they've been doing this with not just this collaboration but they've been doing it for months now with the SS and the BS banners so my assumption would be that we're probably going to just be getting a lot of free rubies over the course of the next several months with any of these events whenever there is a limited banner coming our way so it's a good way to kind of gauge and judge whether or not they've got something coming up on the horizon as well because it tends to be that they announce these free rubies before they even announce any type of limited banner and it kind of tips their hand as to what's coming but i do think that that's going to continue going forward but definitely appreciate the question Azra and valerie and i appreciate you and the next question comes from the Discord as well. This one's going to be from Akuma, who says, Just curious to know what you feel is next after the Dead or Alive collab banner. 
Is it BS Banner with BS Gonitz and BS Clone Zero or SSK and SS King? Thank you for the comment, Akuma. I appreciate it. And I'm going to answer this one a little bit in depth here. So when it comes to what is going to be coming up after the Dead or Alive collaboration, as I'm sure you guys are aware, none of us really have any confirmation whatsoever on this, but the surefire bet on this would be that we're probably looking at an SS banner shortly after this collaboration ends. Now, of course, none of us have any idea what is going to be featured on that SS banner whatsoever, but due to the way they tend to rotate these limited banners, the next thing on the docket should be an SS banner. If I had to make a guess, and this is just purely me guessing, you guys, and if you're on the Discord, you probably know what I would guess would be the next co or the next SS banner, and that is going to be SS Kula and SSK. That's just kind of my assumption, and there's a couple of reasons as to why I assume that, but really the biggest reason why I assume that's probably going to be the case is I would assume that we're probably going to be getting an SS banner a week or two after this collab ends, and that's probably going to coincide with the Epic Quest Chapter 2 update that they've already confirmed we are going to be getting at the end of August, and two characters that definitely fit the bill as characters that fit into the theme of the Nest Saga especially since we know that Epic Quest Chapter 2 is going to be centered around the Nest Saga, is of course going to be Kay and Kula. So I would assume that those two characters would just make a lot of sense for them to go with this time around, but we don't really know and there's no way for me to know at this point. It's just all guesswork. So really, whenever you guys get into these types of discussions, if people try to say, oh, well, I know exactly what we're going to be getting or we have something confirmed as to what we're going to be getting on the next SS or BS banner. Nothing is confirmed. Netmarble tends to kind of surprise us with this kind of stuff, with the way they choose things for better or for worse. So even if you have all of the evidence in the world and feel like you have a surefire idea as to what is going to happen, Netmarble tends to like to throw curveballs our way. So don't necessarily put too much stock into those comments from people if they make them. But I do think that there is a lot of truth to the fact that the idea of getting an SSK and an SS Kula would be a smart SS banner for them to go with. And with the timing of the Epic Quest Chapter 2, again, being the fact that it is going to be centered around the Nest Saga, I'm just going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say that I think that that's probably what we'll get. I don't necessarily think SS King is that close. I think, if anything, she might be on the SS banner after the next one, but again, we don't even have confirmation if she'll ever even get an SS character, much less a Fess character at this point. So it is what it is, you know, as much as I would love to say that I think SS King is going to be happening this month, I, I really don't see it happening, but definitely appreciate the comment and uh, for pointing out SS King in this comment as well, because everybody knows that if you mention SS King, you're going to get my attention. But thanks for the comment, Akuma. I appreciate it. And to close this video out this week, I just wanted to have a little bit of fun because I read a conversation that was going on in the comments section of one of my recent videos and I almost died of laughter, so I had to highlight it here. I'm not going to be putting the names of the people involved in these comments just for their own sake. I don't want anybody going after them or anything like that because I'm not upset by this whatsoever. It just, it's highly entertaining to me. And I've actually seen this come up in other people's videos in the comments sections before, so I figured I'd be the one to address it. But it all started with this comment. I can't believe this guy the big review. He must get paid by Netmarble. He always pulls every Fest character in the game. You are not lucky. You are rigged to succeed. I have gotten nothing in this event which explains why they made this comment in the first place. All YouTubers always pull every second pull. This is BS. Netmarble, you should give everyone a fair go, newbies or celebrities. So that was what started it, and then I'm going to go ahead and read you one of the replies to this one. So <laughs> the re one of the replies was, it's probably because they record, and when they don't pull the characters they want, they delete the video, and so on, and stuff. I only got Kasumi, but I'm happy with what I got, even if it's not much. But anyway, yeah, he isn't rigged. By by the way, it's that when they record and do get the characters, they upload the video and stuff. <laughs> you serious? You know, you love to see it. <laughs> so, 
Again, I've seen people make these types of accusations in the comment sections of my peers' videos in the past as well, so this isn't the first time I've dealt with it either, but I had to say something about it because it just, it, it, it has to be said. So first of all, to my knowledge, and this is just to my own knowledge, None of us in this space are sponsored by Netmarble. Unless you want to count Maximilian Dude, who has done sponsored streams for this game in the past, such as recently when he did the Dead or Alive 6 collaboration live stream on Twitch. Outside of those, none of us are sponsored that I've ever heard of. Also, on top of that, if you didn't notice, whenever Max did that stream, he had to let everybody know it was a sponsored stream. Uh, why is that? Because you have to let people know that and you have to advertise that, otherwise it's against terms of service. So that's another thing. So another part of this conversation is, has to be, have you watched a lot of my pull sessions? Because there have been times that I have gotten really unlucky, especially with battle cards. It's a running joke here on the channel that if I pull one specific 3PG card, I'm probably going to pull a five or six copies of it as I go through my pity rotations. So if you haven't watched any of those videos, and if you still think that I'm sponsored after watching some of that, then you must think that Netmarble hates me because, uh, yeah, my card luck has been absolutely abysmal, save for the Dead or Alive 6 collaboration, in which I did get, thankfully, a little bit luckier than I normally do. And, uh, yeah, I was definitely happy to see that trend break itself. But there's no way in hell that any of us are going to be paid by Netmarble. Netmarble doesn't pay people for this kind of stuff, are you kidding me? Hell, I'd be happy to get a paycheck from any of these companies, much less Netmarble. They aren't going to pay us for this stuff, so... That's another thing there, but honestly, it is what it is. Now, the reply to this one also tried to levy the fact that we somehow try to edit our poll sessions or whatever the case. Now, I can always speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure I can speak for everybody on this because I don't know of anybody that's ever done this. All you guys got to do is pay attention to our ruby counts and our mileage on our banners. That's all you got to do. That tells you all you need to know. So, yeah, needless to say... That isn't true either. The truth of the matter is, and I hate to break it to you guys, RNG exists. This game, your pull rates, it's all RNG. Random number generator. There is no plot behind the scenes. Nobody is pushing a big red button in the background. You know, the guy in the chrysalid mask isn't sitting there waiting for me to go into a pull session and then just hand picking what I get. This just isn't the case. So you can have your conspiracy theories if you like them, if it helps you, but it's not the case. But anyway, guys, that is going to be the Q&A. I just figured that I would go ahead and highlight that one because I thought it was hilarious. As I had mentioned last week, we are going to be doing a lot of spotlights this week, so look forward to those. There's also a video I need to help translate, but until then, like, share, and subscribe. Peace. Continue.